Hello and welcome to Bio Exam Prep IAS. As part of a comprehensive analysis, today we'll be discussing eight very interesting articles out of the Hindu newspaper Daily Edition. The topics in hand today are quite interesting. Good morning to all of you. First is this word called bio transformation. Then the concept of direct taxes and a very important model coming out of Tamil Nadu and how it is teaching us that we don't have to go into the healthcare sector with regards to the insurance based model. Then in the prelims bite section, very interesting but significant developments with regards to ISRO and the GSLV Mark III or the LVM III which was used for the satellites. Thereafter the Chenab Bridge, very important development within the Jammu and Kashmir UT itself. One important species of eel which has been found at, via the coast of Tamil Nadu. Then a uh, development with regards to AUKUS, a uh, very interesting grouping but the purpose of that grouping has been made clear now. And last but not the least is Mahatma Gandhi Narega which is the employment generation and promotion scheme itself and the rates in which has been increased by 10%. We will discuss that. So there are 8 very interesting straightforward articles but the first one is the most important for you with regards to GS paper 3 which is on page number 9. So with this let's enter the analysis for today. Now when you order something of Flipkart or Amazon or any website you get a certain amount of packaging with you and this is the problem within the packaging sector itself or whatever you order via online websites or generally because even if it is a small item or a big item there will be a box there will be a certain amount of plastic which will go in through therefore there's a lot of plastic which is generated within the packaging industry and generally we use what is called single use plastic what do you mean by single use that basically they only have one use which is for packaging thereafter it is more or less useless for you if you don't recycle it now this is a major problem with regards to waste management because single use plastics have been generated throughout the world now with regards to close to 4 to 5 billion kgs of single use plastics are generated across the world and generally in India being a sector in which the online sector is increasing there is a lot of plastic which is generated generally. Now single use plastic is generally considered bad for the environment because even when you destroy them they become what are called microplastics and even if today we go to the Pacific Ocean into the deepest of the sections of the Pacific Ocean in the fishes and in the organisms we are finding certain microbeads or microplastics. So basically plastic has permeated into the food chain itself. There's biomagnification and bioaccumulation in that regard with regards to plastic and microplastic single use plastic is a problem across the board. So single use plastic is generally a problem and here we're discussing the core issue and then we'll go into the concept itself and the nitty gritty itself. So single use plastic generally generated in the packaging industry quite a lot. We all use it, we all know it, we also throw it away but that plastic does not get what we call as it's not biodegradable therefore it does not become a part of the ecosystem itself. It starts to bioaccumulate and therefore has permeated into all food chains and can be found in some quantity in the deepest of parts of the oceans. Now what is the solution? So this article is a solution and a problem based concept that is giving you a problem it's also giving you a solution. So there's a UK based startup and a very interesting study which is happening in the Imperial College in London which is now introducing what is called the concept of bio transformation of bioplastic in the sense that this bio transforming plastic could be the game changer in two major sectors with regards to healthcare and second with regards to food packaging and generally the packaging industry. So I have the data with you with regards to basically what is the quantum of the problem. So we have the data here and we have the solution also but let's try to understand the solution generally. So what happens is that if you produce a single use plastic there is no expiry date. The plastic will persist as a polymer throughout the food cycle throughout the process of bioaccumulation and therefore it will persist in the eco in the ecosystem for a very long time. Now what this new startup is producing is called a new type of plastic which has an expiry date. It has what is called a pre-programmed use period 
meaning that you can program how long how long that plastic should act like plastic in which that the quality and the feel of the plastic remains the purpose it should be in and thereafter when that pre programmed use period is over when that plastic starts to expire thereafter it becomes into what is called bio available wax when it is exposed to the environment and that could be then broken down by the microbes and the organisms which are available in the soil itself therefore making plastic biodegradable and this is the biggest issue with plastic today that it is not biodegradable it cannot be broken down by the organisms in the ecosystem itself therefore it persists and does not go away for hundreds of years now this could be a game changer this could be a game changer because it just changes the way we see plastic itself so the concept the word which is very important for you in the examination is this concept of pre programmed use period that it has already been pre programmed so the polymer will be given a certain type of quality so the quality and the use will remain the same for example you get a box with a pre programmed plastic for the 10 day period it has to hold the commodity in, in 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 itself it will act like plastic itself and thereafter once exposed to sunlight it will start to break down and then become into what is called bioavailable wax which can be then broken down further by the microorganisms and that in turn can lead to plastic becoming biodegradable becoming part of the nutrient cycle of the earth itself now this as i said is very significant for two sectors which could change everything the two sectors would be food packaging and the other would be healthcare healthcare as it is we have a lot of syringes we had a lot of plastic which is used once thereafter it is not safe to use and that could be the solution for these two sectors to become the way forward and generally reduce the amount of waste we are producing so for the purpose of the examination please understand there could be a very straight forward question what is bio transformation technology and this process of plastic having a certain use till a point and thereafter automatically dissolving is bio transformation that it is biologically transforming itself because or in the way that it is exposed to the environment and once it is exposed to the environment it automatically breaks down now this is a very important concept for gs paper 3 generally can come as a straight forward question and this is a uk based startup which is doing it so three things before i go into the major discussion first is that plastic single use is a major problem second bio transformation is the solution third bio transformation is based on the concept of having a pre programmed period or pre programmed use period of plastic in which it acts like plastic and thereafter it automatically breaks down once exposed to the environment and that makes plastic biodegradable so the imperial college in london is working on this major model in which they can make this plastic cheap and available everywhere have developed a technology that could alter the state of plastics and make them biodegradable the company calls it bio transformation it claims that these this technology could digest the plastic packaging naturally with the help of microbes and biodegradable agents and therefore not leaving any microplastic in the environment and this is a major issue as of right now which is microplastics and microbeads that plastic is persisting so much that even organisms in the pacific ocean in the atlantic ocean deepest close to 10 kilometers down there we are still finding microplastics and plastic is circulating throughout the earth in the form of either either full blown full blown plastic or into microbeads form so there is persistence that we already know now the first point which i told you was that why is there a need now this gives you the quantum of the problem what is the quantum of the problem now e-commerce giant amazon just in 2021 generated 321 million kilograms of plastic waste for packaging we've already seen that be it flipkart be it any e-commerce giant it will be a huge amount of plastic which they'll be using and this has been assessed by a a small 
company called the Oceania and this has argued that this boxes and this plastic is persisting is and the quantum is so much that it can encircle the earth 800 times as an air pillow. So basically the billions of boxes which are shipped every year and the quantum of plastic which is being used by Amazon alone can basically encircle the earth 800 times. More than that, 3.5 billion kgs of plastic waste was produced in India itself every year and the per capita plastic waste generation has doubled in the five years. Basically India is developing therefore the e-commerce industry is developing that in turn led to five times increase in, in the, the data with regards to the last 10 years and doubling in the last five years. So we are using close to 3.5 billion kgs of plastic waste and in 2019 itself the total total waste plastic waste produced by e-commerce itself is a billion kgs so therefore it's a very big amount the fact of the matter is this is the issue that we are producing so much waste and e-commerce alone as a sector is producing a billion kgs of waste and that too in plastic that it is a concerning aspect and this is why we expect a question in the examination generally because plastics are something which have become a major problem with regards to bioaccumulation and biomagnification. Basically it has started to accumulate within biological bodies and the quantum and the magnitude is increasing every step as we go in the food chain. Therefore, therefore the quantum should be clear that yes it is a problem because some of the articles talk about non-issues this is an issue this is an issue that basically close to 3.5 billion kgs we are producing we have doubled in the last five years five times in the last 10 years and over and above that the e-commerce industry needs a solution and there have been a lot of understanding last week itself we discussed what is the concept of waste to waste to energy but waste to energy generation, we saw that in India segregation is not that good. Plastics could be used for waste to energy, but that is not a sustainable solution in itself. And this is where this startup comes through, where in the Imperial College in London, along with a Britain based startup called Polymateria, this is arguing that they are now producing a bio transforming plastic in this technology. A plastic can be pre-programmed with regards to time. So pre-programmed time duration in which the manufactured materials looks like and feels like a plastic itself without compromising on quality. Once the product expires and everything expires but plastic doesn't, now we will have plastic which can expire. Therefore, this plastic once it expires, this pre-programmed period is gone once exposed to the external environment, to the environment itself, it will self-destruct, bio-transform into bioavailable wax, which can be then further decomposed into water, CO2 and biomass by microorganisms. Therefore, this bio-transformation technology is the worst, world's first, first technology which can lead to biodegradable plastics and no microplastics itself. They are naming it as polyolefins, as polyolefins. This is the term which they are giving to it. And therefore, this could be a game changer for two sectors, which is food packaging and healthcare sector. So I'm repeating myself till this point. The basic point is plastics is an issue by accumulation by magnification the fact that microbeads and microplastics have now entered into every food chain itself and there needs to be a solution for plastic there are different forms of solution but this is a new one which is called biotransformation this is the word which is very important for you in the examination biotransformation can change everything because it can lead to plastics having an expiry date pre-programmed use purpose and duration once the plastic expires it automatically becomes biodegradable it can change the whole sector itself and microplastics can be eliminated fully can be limited fully now 
it's not that the government of India has not been cognizant of plastics itself. We have other initiatives also. So we will revise them generally to know what is the government of India doing to control plastics itself. And India has launched multiple initiatives for that. With regards to plastic waste management, there's a gazette which tells us how to dispose of single-use plastic. There's also a national dashboard on elimination of single-use plastics and plastic waste management generally which brings all stakeholders together in order to reduce the waste itself. There's also extended producer responsibility portal which tells us which producer, importer and brand owners are not disposing plastics generally in a safe way. But the basic point of this article is very simple. Is that there is a new technology which is in vogue which is called biotransformation. This could be a game changer generally. Biotransformation can lead to what we call as bioplastics which is biodegradable plastic in the fact that the fact that it can have an expiry date and it automatically becomes into water, CO2 and biomass is a major development in this sector itself. So this topic is very simple but very significant because you can see it either in a prelims question or in a mains question for sure because new types of technologies are always asked by UPSC. First and foremost point, what is the concept? Biodegradable plastic in a way has pre-programmed, very important, pre-programmed use duration thereafter it expires and can be then be broken down by microorganisms into CO2 water and biomass. Simple point, what are the two sectors which need it? The most right now, food packaging and the concept of healthcare but the packaging industry is producing a lot of waste as of right now and this is something which needs to be operationalized as soon as possible. So it's a new technology which can be taken forward in that regard. Is this concept clear? Biotransformation, if you see in the examination, you know what it means. Yes or no? Yes? Perfect. Now, we move to a very small but very important development with regards to the Indian economy. The fact is that our net direct income from taxes is now starting to slow down. So there was a lot of chirp and a lot of talk about the direct taxes in India rising constantly, steadily for the past five to six years. However, direct tax growth has shown and is now starting to slow down surely but slowly and therefore, therefore, for you and me, it is important to generally know, generally know, what is the reason for that. So, India's net direct tax collection, which stood at 17% growth by 2022-23, by early March this year itself, has now started to moderate to 15%. Now, what we mean by direct tax collection, when we talk about the receipts of the government itself, there are indirect taxes and there are direct taxes. Indirect taxes is very easy, straightforward GST. But direct taxes which could be income tax, corporation tax and the securities transaction tax. Income tax you and me give, corporation tax corporations give and securities transaction tax would be on stocks and equity itself what happens in the stock market. These three are the three major sources of the government's income. Now as per the division, as per basic economics, it is good to have direct taxes as a sizable portion of your receipts and therefore therefore direct tax collection is both both two things an indicator how the economy is growing and is about compliance and how many people come within the tax bracket itself and second also is a very safe form of income or receipt for the government generally now now if the direct tax sector starts to slow down it is indicated of two things first that either unemployment is rising so people are going out of the tax bracket itself or second is the aspect related to a slowdown that basically there's a recessionary trend which is coming through and people's consumption is going down people's income is going down and that can also be seen in direct tax collection now in india the case is different the the Indian case basically is based on COVID-19 and base effect. Now, what do you mean by base effect? Base effect is that basically if the base year is skewed and is not based on the right year itself, 
even in a declining phase you can actually show growth for example for example if i take this graph if i take this graph the the this is 2000 and this is 2021 for example and my base year is 2000 my base year is 2000 now in this i was producing for example two units and now i was producing at the peak 10000 units now this is called growth yes from two units to 10000 units i was showing growth but if i don't change my base to for example 2015 i will still show in a declining phase growth why because vis-a-vis -vis these two units even when i'm producing 7000 6000 5000 4000 it is still more than the two units therefore even when in a rising phase or a declining phase due to base effect if your base is not correct base year is not correct you can show growth and basically this is what is happening because covid 19 pandemic the way it impacted the economies there was so much negative growth that everything looks like a growth right now if you look at vis-a-vis -vis the last fiscal so if if i see direct tax collection vis-a-vis 2015-2014 it's not a big change however if i'm looking at it vis-a-vis -vis 2011 uh, 2021 2019 2020 then it is showing growth and therein lies the problem that basically there are two things which are happening firstly there is a small amount of slowing down and there is a predicted recessionary trend within this year itself but more than that more than that the base effect itself because we are not looking at it vis-a-vis 2004-5 or 2014-15 we're looking at vis-a-vis -vis the last quarter or last fiscal and if the last fiscal is going vis-a-vis vis-a-vis into the covid 19 pandemic itself then everything seems growth but now what is happening is that growth period that 17 percent we saw is now topping off so basically this 15 percent and 17 percent is not a form of slowing down what is happening is this 17% looked huge because it was vis-a-vis -a, -vis a COVID-19 pandemic year. Now it is 15% because the, the whole system is correcting itself because the base effect is going away and the aspect of real growth is coming through. And that is why you saw that even in the last week we discussed, even our GDP prediction has gone to 4.4%. Because the point where we were discussing and the point from where we were actually comparing is now becoming more and more clear because we were comparing with 2021 19 here there was negative growth vis-a-vis -vis negative growth anything was positive and it used 32 percent increase 27 percent increase 50 percent increase but that was technically not 50 percent increase because we were already at minus 27 percent now what is happening is that effect is going away and with that effect going away with regards to covid 19 pandemic year correcting itself this is called over correction or correction that the economy is correcting itself with regards to data we are seeing slow down but as i said there are three things and we have to go a step further to understand this there are three things at play here first it could easily very easily be the fact related to that there is a recessionary trend there's a consumption is going down generally there is unemployment increasing with a lot of corporations cutting on their jobs second could be base effect itself and third is here it is about correction it's a correction in the economic data with regards to we coming out of the covid 19 pandemic base and therefore allowing us to have a real picture of our growth itself so this topic generally is a very small topic i took this opportunity to tell you what it actually means to have this data indicating slowdown it's not a slowdown but basically it's a correction that because our base year has changed from 20 2019 2020 to now 21 22 when the second and the third wave were gone and the indian economy started to revive now we see direct tax collection vis-a-vis -vis, and this is the reason this is the reason why why this is showing a slowdown itself so the government net receipts from direct tax collection had grown about 49% in 21-22 to 
to almost 14 lakh crore rupees. This included corporation tax, personal income tax and security transaction tax. The sharp growth was attributed to the economy's gradual recovery from COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns that hit the economic activity itself. The inflow from direct taxes had, taxes had risen about 20% as mid-December 2022 but now have started to record a slowdown in the growth rate itself. But as I said, this slowdown is because the data was skewed itself and that data is now becoming more and more clear because of the COVID-19 pandemic effect going away and because the reference point is now becoming more and more what we call as realistic and representative, therefore it is showing a little bit of downward trend. So it is not an alarm bell but it is indicative of processes which are happening within the economy which are much greater than just straightforward macroeconomics. Here there is a lot in play with regards to base effect, with regards to COVID-19 pandemic and how the economic outlook of the world is also there. Therefore, therefore, if you bring all the three together, it gives you a better understanding of what is happening in the economy and generally the direct tax collection in that sense. Now with this, let's move to the third and the one of the most interesting out of these three, which is the Tamil Nadu model. Now please pay attention because what happens in the examination is a lot of time they use this word itself, Tamil Nadu model of healthcare or the concept of insurance based healthcare. Now in Tamil Nadu, it's a very big healthcare sector, but very efficient also in that regard with regards to 19,000 doctors and there's a data which has been provided by the article, editorial article itself. It was written by a doctor himself, so therefore the, da the data is quite reliable from 38 medical colleges, 18 district hospitals. It's a very efficient network. But the efficiency of this network is based on a peculiarity. And the iconic aspect is that the health delivery system in Tamil Nadu has been able to improve the maternal and infant mortality, immunization coverage has increased, there is low total fertility rate compared to all India average, therefore, therefore, generally this model is working, but there is a downside to it also. Therefore, we need to see what is the basic model in Tamil Nadu and what are the problems within it. Now, let's try to understand it. In Tamil Nadu, it's a very efficient system because it's an insurance system based model wherein, wherein people are given insurance by the state also and under the national health mission, the center and the state both give insurance coverage to the people and therefore healthcare accessibility is something which people have generally and affordability is also there because the state pays a certain amount of premium, the center pays a certain amount of premium and the people also pay to the insurance company. So there is a three-way division. The center and the state basically there is a 60-40 ratio that 60% of the insurance premiums are being paid by the center with regards to subsidizing the healthcare itself. 40% is being paid by, by the, the state when it comes to state contribution and people also paying to the insurance companies. Now this means that basically every department in, in a medical college or generally a hospital is right now having a lot of funds accessible to it via the insurance system based model of healthcare. However, however, what this article technically talks about is that though Hospitals, because they have this access to money which is available from the state and the center itself and the private players, there is also a lot of decentralization with regards to decision making wherein the departments can take, the cardio department, the neuro department, they can take their own decisions and have a decentralized model of control with regards to what is their requirement, what is the money which needs to be allocated. There is a lot of decentralization. So the two peculiarities which mark the Tamil Nadu system would be decentralization which is giving the colleges and the hospitals and the departments autonomy 
And the second would be that it's an insurance based model where there is a lot of contribution which is done by the state also and the people also. Therefore, affordability, accessibility is something which has been created. That money is also used for development, development purposes. Therefore, asset creation is also happening. So it's a good model if you look at the positives only. However, as a doctor, the author of this article talks about the lopsided or the negatives wherein there needs to be a change in methodology because this model is also producing a lot of problematic aspects related to healthcare and the Tamil Nadu model needs to be reconsidered and therefore should not be replicated as it is across India because this is the basic point of this article. Now what is the problem? The problem is that basically doctors have now become managers wherein they have to manage how the money is coming through. The second is the fact that because money has to be taken from insurance companies, from the state and the center, there is a lot of pressure on the hospitals to ex get this money from the different channels and every department is competing with each other because asset allocation and money allocation is based on recoveries. So therefore, there's a competition between different departments and there's a concept of profit and loss that if they're not able to meet this basic target, it will in turn lead to internally to them losing that money in the next fiscal so therefore therefore there's a general there's a general concept of business though healthcare is business healthcare should not be made into a process in which profit loss and asset allocation and money allocation should be something as a priority for the hospitals itself and there's also a new concept that because they have to keep the costs down and there's a certain amount of money which is available. There's also a lot of contractual labor which has been taken. And there's a creation of two types of employees, very high paying and very low paying. And therefore, there's no incentive within the hospitals to work. And there could be an employment crisis itself within the healthcare sector. And last but not the least is the fact related to how, how the whole model itself is based on contributions. So if the state is not contributing as it is the private sector cannot survive because the 60 40 the state contribution is pivotal to make the system efficient so though it is an efficient system though it has led to a lot of good in Tamil Nadu and it is based on this insurance contribution via two basic schemes and the fact that people have access but because the money is available to the hospitals in a certain way this in turn means that hospitals there mindset has changed in that regard so the aspect here is that the funding in healthcare in the last decade or so in tamil nadu has changed and it's a model which has which is in being repl replicated and is been seen as a solution there's a fund mixing with regards to grants which are coming via the national health mission and the chief ministers what we call as comprehensive health insurance scheme people also contribute to this the state also contributes to it therefore making an insurance scheme in which there is certain amount of money available to the hospitals the positives with regards to this insurance system is that because there's decentralization of responsibility in turn powers have been substantially transferred to department heads how much drugs they need to purchase. There's no red, tis, red, red tapeism. There's no top down that the state is deciding how much medicine should go to a hospital. Every hospital is taking its own call. Decentralization has empowered individual departments to prioritize their needs and take decisions with regards to patient care in accordance to the evidence given to them and the advancement in medical sciences itself. However, as much as it looks like a very good model because of decentralization, available money itself. The negatives are there. And as I said, this article is about flagging an issue. It's a problem raising article. As I said, there are different type of articles, solution, problem. This is a problem raising article. And the negatives outweigh the positives here and therefore we need to change our methodology. Every department in medical colleges have become individual establishments. Therefore, they try to maximize profit and minimize losses. Therefore, each of them are working or are competing with each other with regards to loss and profit. 
administrative delays are also happening with regards to insurance companies giving them money which is entitled to them for the patient therefore hospitals are right now just working to claim the money from these companies rather than doing going into patient care teaching and research further there has been a certain type of employment practices which has started within the healthcare sector in tamil nadu to 6000 nurses 9800 allied health workers have been taken on contractual purposes therefore there are two types of working employees very high paid versus the temporary low salaried staff nurses if they don't have incentive they are the most important part in the whole healthcare system and therefore doctors in the primary health centers are function like managers rather than the as doctors and clinicians clinicians that basically they are not doctors they are managers they have to manage how much medicine medicine is coming they have to manage the supplies they have to manage the money itself and therefore the focus has shifted away from healthcare to management of funds itself and therefore therefore this article is talking about both the positives and the negative of an insurance system based healthcare model wherein the positive would be decentralization leads to better healthcare management at the at the grassroots level however it has a negative basically doctors have become managers departments look for profit and loss and further there is a practice which is coming through which is contractualization of the workers itself within the healthcare sector thereby disincentivizing people to going into this sector now for us what is the purpose of this discussion for us the purpose of discussion is only two things first is if they say tamil nadu model of healthcare they mean insurance based model second is the aspect related to what are the pros and cons when we look at the pros there is a lot with regards to how efficiency comes through the service the service delivery is better grassroot level but the cons are more which is that doctors are not able to concentrate on patient care or they have become managers who are managing funds drugs and asset allocation and hospitals are always looking towards these insurance companies to give them funds and therefore every hospital is the priority is to get money out of the insurance companies itself so though there is a certain amount of money which is available to them it is coming to the insurance companies therefore there's a lot of what is called administrative delay so before i move on to the prelims by its sector section let's see what we've done till this point with the gas to three articles we've done first we discussed the concept of bio transformation and we are revising here bio transformation is the concept of how plastics can be now produced with an expiry date once the pre programmed usage period is over it could in turn lead to it expiring and becoming into bio wax which can be then biodegradable it's a very important technology because the amount of waste which has been produced by the the packaging sector the e-commerce sector is huge and therefore this could be a solution second was this direct tax collection and how we can see direct tax collection data in the right light itself we can see a slow down with regards to it however that is the way the economy is and the data itself with regards to 50% that high increase ratio was because of the base effect and we are now seeing a correction in the data itself and this article was about the tamil nadu model of very simply the insurance based healthcare model wherein insurance money is given decentralization is there however it has its positives and negatives are we clear with regards to this then we'll move into the prelim section interesting five small articles yes or no yes great okay now the first article we discuss for your prelims purposes is isro and isro has just yesterday put 36 one web satellites into orbit the one web satellite system itself is coming from the one web group of companies which is in the uk and there is an understanding between one web and the new space india limited this is the commercial wing of the isro so as to launch 72 satellites this is the second mission of the one web and the positioning is not important but the payload is important 
as you can see that the payload is close to 5000 kgs 5000 kgs which introduces an aspect related to this new word we are seeing in the newspaper which is LVM3 see we know about the different rockets which is used by the ISRO first is the PSLV the GSLV the SSLV but PSLV and GSLV are the two major rockets which are used the PSLV four stage solid liquid solid liquid and thereafter GSLV would be solid liquid cryogenic three stage now this LVM3 if you will look at it launch vehicle mark 3 is basically a word which is used for the GSLV mark 3 now this is the major point I want to push to you through this article they are not asking you payload capacity and generally because it is above 2000-2500 it had to be a GSLV rocket itself because of the cryogenic stage which has the input to take heavy payloads into the atmosphere and into the orbit itself the fact of the matter is that previously we did not see the use of the word LVM3 we used to see it was written GSLV Mark 3 now they are using this word GSLV Mark 3 LVM3 this data this basic information I got from the ISRO website itself because ISRO has changed its own nomenclature so though there is GSLV in Mark 2, Mark 1 and Mark 3, Mark 2 having the C25 engine, this is the engine C20 which we have, cryogenic engine which we have developed itself and therefore in the examination if you see the word LVM it is technically GSLV only and, and 3 would be the version, Mark 1 it could be LVM1, it could be LVM2 and it could be LVM3, this means GSLV only. GSLV Mark 1, Mark 2 and Mark 3. Mark is basically to mark, to give it a distinction. There is no, no concept of how Mark is the measurement of speed with regards to fighter jets. But that is not the Mark. This is generally to give the version. So this is version 1, version 2, version 3. GSLV Mark 3 is basically the one which we have fully indigenously developed with the Vikas engine and, and this C20 and C25 cryogenic engines now being produced by us itself and is a three stage rocket so this is ro rocket launch is important for us generally but why I am discussing it here is because of the term itself because this term is being used by the newspapers itself and they are not specifying what it actually refers to and therefore you need to basically know that LVM3 means GSLV Mark 3 and it's a very important rocket because it, uh, it is the only one which has the capability to take 4 tons and above, 4000 kgs and above to low earth or even geosynchronous or GTO or what we call as geostationary orbit. It is the only one which has the, which has the capacity. PSLV, GSLV, major difference is PSLV is 4 stage, solid liquid, solid liquid and here GSLV is 3 stage, solid liquid, cryogenic wherein very uh, cryogenic because at very low temperature oxygen and hydrogen are mixed together to create the input thrust itself now the next is a very interesting bridge which has been in the news quite a lot now it's called the Chenab bridge and uh, this bridge has now more or less more or less being the basic shape and the basic construction activity has been done though it will be inaugurated only in 2024 the fact of the matter is that there are certain details you need to know for the examination now it has been touted as India claiming it to be the world's highest rail bridge it is believed that it is taller than the Eiffel Tower itself and this 85 story tower on two hill slopes which is called the Chenab bridge itself is going to allow the Jammu and Kashmir sector to have better commerce and better movement and better transportation. It is a 359 meter bridge first, second over the Chenab river itself in the Jammu and Kashmir Raisi district. First maiden run of what is called a 
track mounted trolley a small trolley which you would have seen people the the officers have for inspection this bridge which is costing us close to 1. Point, uh, what is called 1400 crores is part of the Udhampur Srinagar Baramula rail link project which is going to connect the Kashmir Valley with the rest of the country and it is believed that it is going to reduce the time by close to 3.5 hours and more than that it will lead to a major boost to the commerce and the economy of Jammu and Kashmir UT itself. Now for us, for us generally what is important is that it has been claimed that it is the world's highest railway bridge itself will be operational only in 2024. For you, Chenab River becomes an important fact. The fact that it is taller than the Eiffel Tower itself and the fact that which sector it is plying in. In the examination, they can ask you basic details with regards to it. And it's a very realistic question because it is a major project, 1,400 crores put in to connect the, the, the two hillocks and the Chenab River in the base of it. It's a very interesting, very important, it's an engineering marvel in itself and, and is a very significant development with regards to infrastructure in the Jammu and Kashmir sector itself. Now, next is prelims oriented, a new species of what is called the more eel has been found in Tamil Nadu and named after Tamil Nadu itself. So researchers have found at the Kudralar coast a more eel but it is a new species itself and therefore it has been named after Tamil Nadu Glanomathax Tamil Nadu Nessis or it is called the Tamil Nadu brown more basically basically for you if it says brown more if it says this scientific name you just need to know that it's a new species found in Tamil Nadu that is the only thing they can ask you with regards to this type of a topic. So I hope that this till, till this point we are clear with regards to what we are having as discussion. So three major topics with regards to mains examination and we've done three very small and straightforward topics out of the Hindu newspaper. Are we clear with regards to what we've done till this point? Yes we are. The, the concept of Amore Eel, the Chenab Bridge and ISRO launching the GSLB Mark III and what the concept of biotransformation, the aspect related to our direct tax collection and the concept of an insurance based model. Now comes a IR related topic, the AUKUS, the AUKUS, basically based on Australia, UK and the US. Now this was in the news for two basic reasons. India has been pushing as much as it has been pushing with regards to the concept of Quad has been pushing for greater engagement with the AUKUS. However, however, in a recent meeting, there was a major revelation or a major assertion made by this body or this what we call as grouping that there are two basic pillars in which it works. First is that the partnership is based on submarine technology and therefore it is a purely technological partnership and the second would be other aspects related to strategic and defense co cooperation and coordination wherein maybe a fourth country can be considered and this is why it is important for you that basically this primary arrangement of Australia, UK and the US is about submarine technological development and there is no room for a fourth country wherein an alliance with India or any other country would be possible. As it is, it is based on nuclear submarine technology and the Americans will never give nuclear submarine technology to India. And therefore, therefore, though they are ready to equip Australia with an SSN class nuclear attack submarine, the fact is Australia will receive three second hand SSNs from the US by 2030 and thereafter UK is producing what we call as submarines which are nuclear capable by the period of 2040s. The fact is it is only in the second pillar with regards to electronic warfare, cyberspace, quantum and others where they are open for a fourth partner. 
what the article technically points out is India has been pushing to become a part of the AUKUS quite a lot. However, they have made it very clear that it's about submarine technology and as per the regime itself, as per the arrangement which is there as of right now, India will never be given access to American nuclear technology. That is for sure. And that to submarine technology. And therefore, we can discount the fact that we will never be part of AUKUS as a technological partner. And it is Australia. This is all part of the, the counter China strategy of the US in the Pacific. They're technically arming Australia with, with three, then later three more, six by 2040, uh, what we call nuclear submarines as a deterrent to China within this sector. However, India has been looking for more active participation. But the basic point is they have said, we will not cooperate on the first pillar with regards to submarine technology. Second, where there we can discuss defense and strategy, India and other fourth country can be considered. And that is the basic importance of this article because it gives a very straightforward vision of AUKUS. It's not a partnership based on economic cooperation or it's not a partnership which is based on a strategic defense partnership. No, it's a technologically based submarine technology based partnership and therefore India has no space or India has no place within it generally as of right now. With this, let's move to the last but a very simple and straightforward article with regards to Mahatma Gandhi. National Rural Employment Generation Scheme and Guarantee Scheme, which is that basically there has been a 10% revision in the wage rates of MG Narega. Under this, under this, the wages have been increased 10%, but across the board, each and every state has to apply it. And as of right now, Haryana has the highest daily wage within, within, the, within MG Narega, Narega or Naregas which is 357 rupees and Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh have the lowest with regards to 221 daily wage. Compared to last year's rates, Rajasthan registered the highest percentage increase in wages. Bihar, Jharkhand percentage increase was 8% over the last year. Chhattisgarh and MP have the lowest daily wages, 221 and the percentage increase is 17%, which is still significant. And Karnataka, Goa, Meghalaya and Manipur has registered the lowest percentage increase. Now what do you do with this information? What you just need to know basically is highest and lowest. Highest would be Haryana, lowest would be MP and Chhattisgarh. The fact of the matter is there is a revision of the daily wages within the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme itself. And the fact of the matter is that every state has to then apply it. For us what we see is that basically Haryana is paying the most Though percentage increase for even Chhattisgarh and MP 17%, still it is the, at the lowest, 221. This also shows you how there's a inequality or what we call, call as a spread within MG Narega, wherein, wherein the fact of the matter is every state does not give you the same amount of money. So that is a state-based decision and therefore, therefore, uniformity is something we would expect. We would expect. So, so, before I go to the mains question and end this session, we have done eight very interesting topics. First, very important for you, biotransformation, plastic which can biodegrade and the fact that it has a pre-programmed purpose period, thereafter it automatically self-destructs. Second, we discussed the concept of direct tax collection slowing down, but that was based on a certain amount of data collection. Third, we discussed the insurance-based model of Tamil Nadu, a cautionary tale of how it can commercialize and make basically healthcare sector into a sector where they're talking about what we call as profit and loss and getting money from insurance companies, doctors as managers with regards to supplies and assets itself. Then we moved on to the other five smaller topics with regards to prelims. Our focus is totally different here. Details don't matter. What matters is the context. Therefore, we discussed the Chennai Bridge, ISRO launching GSLV Mark III, that was the basic point. LVM3 means GSLV Mark III. And thereafter, we discussed a more eel named after Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu coast itself. Then AUKUS as a submarine-based strategic partnership. And last but not the least, the wage increase within MG Narega. With this, I would like to move to the mains questions. First, what is biotransformation technology? 
how can it revolutionize waste management in India? A very realistic question in the examination, very realistic question, because it can come and this is this is the way GS paper 3 is made with new technologies in mind. Thereafter, what are the advantages and disadvantages of an insurance based healthcare sector? Both would be GS paper 3, very realistic, very interesting questions. If you have not heard this discussion, it will become hard to answer it. Therefore, I hope that this discussion, you can write these answers for sure. With this, I would like to end the session. Thank you so much for your patience. I will see you soon. But as always, if you find these sessions useful, do like, share and subscribe to our channel. As much as that, there will be on the Telegram channel a test as soon as this session is over to check, check your MCQ based knowledge out of these eight topics. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.